Hello and welcome to today's webinar on moving automotive parts to Great Britain from the European Union, delivered by the Cabinet Office's Border, Trade and Brexit Opportunities Unit. This webinar is part of a series of webinars being run over the next few months and is intended to give traders, in particular EU exporters and British importers, a simple step-by-step -step guide for how to export goods to Great Britain since the 1st of January 2022 following the introduction of new importing controls. Just to go through some ground rules before we start, please can you put yourself on mute and keep on mute throughout the webinar with your camera turned off. Ask any questions that you may have in the Q&A or chat bar throughout the webinar. We will publish the recording of this webinar alongside the slides after the session and a document setting out the answers to any frequently asked questions will also be circulated as soon as we get it. Surveys on business readiness are now running. Please answer the short questions on our Slido on your browser or your mobile using the code that's available on the slides. So let's first have a look at what is changing for people moving goods between the EU and Great Britain. This slide shows the two key dates relating to automotive parts coming into the country. The first highlights the changes that have come into effect since the 1st of January 2022 and the second highlights the second set of changes which will be coming into effect from the 1st of July 2022. Since the 1st of January, full import declarations are now required. This is the use of simplified procedures called Simplified Customs Declaration Processes known as SCDP this was formerly known as CFSP and you'll have to do this if you're authorised to do so. And this includes the payment of relevant tariffs at import. From the 1st of July 2022 onwards, entry summary declarations will be required on imports into Great Britain. This presentation will cover the processes and the border procedures required to move automotive parts from the EU into Great Britain. This will have particular focus on the border requirements in Great Britain since the 1st of January 2022 and from the 1st of July 2022 onwards. In this case study, we will be specifically looking at moving car seatbelts from Portugal. It is important to note that GB ports or terminals receiving goods that are moving into Great Britain from the EU have the option to choose between two models for customs controls. The first model is the temporary storage model, which allows goods to be stored for up to 90 days at a government approved facility before a declaration is made. And the second is the new pre-lodgement model, which was developed as an alternative for where border locations may not have the space or infrastructure to operate a temporary storage regime. In this example, the movement is through the short streets where the GB port or terminal will use the pre-lodgement model only. Please note that the freight is also moving as a company row row. This slide introduces the three main people in our journey. Claire is the importer based in Great Britain. Claire is aware that new border requirements and paperwork will now be required to import car seatbelts from Portugal to Great Britain. Carlos is the exporter based in Portugal and he sells auto parts to Great Britain. Carlos has been exporting to Great Britain for a number of years and he is also now aware that, the GB, that GB has left the European Union and that there are now new border requirements and paperwork that he will need to complete. Jose is the driver for the haulage company that Claire has employed to transport the seatbelts. Jose and the haulage company are based in Portugal and they will transport the seatbelts to Great Britain through the short straits, for example, from Calais or Coquel to Dover or Folkestone. In this example, we outline the changes that are required from the 1st of January 2022 and then the final rule changes that will be required from the 1st of July 2022 onwards. So let's now move on to the step-by-step -step guide. Prior to the shipping of the goods, Carlos, the EU exporter, and Claire, the British importer, will need to agree the type of INCO terms that they will trade on. INCO terms are the rules which set out everyone's responsibilities when exporting and importing. 
You can click on the link provided in the slides for more information. In this example, Carlos will be responsible for and carry out the export procedures and Claire will be responsible for and carry out the import procedures. Jose's haulage company is transporting the goods and will therefore be responsible for the safety and security declarations. This is an accompanied movement, which means that someone, in this case Jose, will stay with the goods all the way to Claire's premises in Great Britain. Also to stress, in this example, the goods are not moving under transit. A link for more information on movements using transit is available in the slide pack. If you decide to use a customs agent to move your goods for you, you will need to agree their roles and responsibilities prior to shipping the goods. Carlos needs to apply for an EU Economic Operators Registration and Identification Number. This is known as an EORI for short. An EU EORI is needed when interacting with EU systems and a GB EORI is needed for completing GB customs processes. An EORI identifies who is importing or exporting goods. To apply for an EORI number in the EU, you can go to and check out the EU Commission website or click on the link in the slides. In general, most businesses hire a company such as a freight forwarder or a customs agent to deal with the customs for them. Sometimes the company you use to transport your goods can do the customs paperwork for you. In this example, however, Claire and Carlos have decided to do the paperwork themselves. Claire will also need to apply for a GB EORI number if she doesn't already have one. Carlos should speak to Claire to confirm that she has done this prior to the export. Jose's haulage company will need both an EU and a GB EORI number. They will need this to use both border and custom systems in the EU and in Great Britain. Even if you hire a company to do the customs paperwork for you, you will, need, you will still need to apply for an EORI number. In this example, Carlos needs an EU EORI number and Claire will need a G EORI number. Again, just to highlight, Jose's haulage company will need to have both GB and EU EORI numbers. It's important to note that once you have a GB EORI number, you will not need to apply again. The EORI number is related to your company rather than each import or export, and so it will always remain the same. Further information on GB EORI numbers can be found on gov.uk by searching EORI, or you can click the link available in the slides. In this case, Claire, the GB importer receiving the goods, is also the declarant. This means that she is the person responsible for submitting the import declaration as agreed with Carlos when they agreed their income terms. Claire will need a GB EORI number to access GB computer systems or software to submit the declarations. In this example, Claire will need to access to the customs handling of import and export freight system. This is known as Chief. Chief is a GB computer system that records the import declaration when importing goods from overseas. Further information on this can be found on the link in the slides. Claire will need to purchase software to enable her to complete her declaration. She will then need to select a community systems provider known as a CSP that operates at her chosen GB port. The CSP will send her declaration electronically to Chief. It is worth noting that Chief will eventually be replaced by the Customs Declaration Service and this will be known as CDS. To access Chief, Claire will need to apply using a C1800 form available on gov.uk. She will need to include information such as her contact details, her EORI number, which community systems provider she'll be using, the badge allocated by the community systems provider, the port or location her goods will travel through, and the entry processing unit number. It is important to note that there are costs associated with using this system and again many people do use an agent to do this for them. From the 1st of January 2022, 
Cozy's haulage company will now need to register for GB's Goods Vehicle Movement Service. This is known as GVMS. GVMS handles the pre-lodgement of customs declarations. Hosey's company will also need to register to use the safety and security system called SNSGB. They will need to use this to submit their entries, entry summary declarations from the 1st of July 2022 onwards. Hosey's haulage company can register for GVMS through gov.uk. They will need to have a GB EORI number and a government gateway user ID and password. If they, do not, if they do not have a user ID, they can create one when they register. Multiple team members can be added so that they can use this service. Hosey's haulage company will also need to register to use SNSGB service on gov.uk. Again, they will need to have a government gateway user ID. Once registered, they can submit the entry summary declarations by either purchasing compatible software or employing the service of a community systems provider. Under the new trading rules, some EU and GB goods can be moved from the EU into GB without having to pay tariffs. The rules of origin stipulate that only goods produced in GB or EU benefit from the zero tariff agreement. So if your goods were made in another country, for example China, you would have to pay tariffs. If traders cannot prove that their product meets the rules of origin through the relevant paperwork, they cannot benefit from the zero tariffs agreed with the EU. You can search for more information on rules of origin on gov.uk. Clara makes sure that Carlos's goods meet the rules of origin. And as Carlos's seatbelts are produced in Portugal, Claire can claim a tariff fee a tariff free rate and won't have to pay tariff costs for moving goods. You can check the tariff rates for different products at the web address on the slide. Please note that from the 1st of January 2023, products sold in Great Britain will need to have the UKCA, this is the UK Conformity Assessed marking. For more information on when and how to use these markings, please click the link in the slides. Carlos will need to submit a merged exit summary declaration and export declaration to the Portuguese export system STADA. This may be accompanied by an export accompanying document, which will include the, the movement reference number known as the MRN. On the export declaration, Portugal will be shown as the country of export and France will be shown as the country of exit from the European Union. Carlos lists France as the port of exit because this is where the goods leave the EU. It is important that Carlos lodges his export declaration in Portugal, which is the country where he is based, rather than in France, the country of exit, because otherwise his business would have to be VAT registered in France to be able to complete the declaration. As Carlos has submitted a merged export and safety and security declaration and has an export accompanying document, a separate exit summary declaration will not need to be submitted on the member state's export control system. If a combined export declaration and safety and security declaration had not been submitted, a separate exit summary declaration would then be required. So we know that Carlos has submitted the export declaration. He has prepared his goods and it is now time for Jose to collect the seatbelts from Carlos's premises in Portugal and take them to Great Britain. Jose collects the goods and the haulage company ensures that he has all the relevant documentation. Before Jose sets off, he will need the movement reference number for the export declaration. If already available, he will need the movement reference number for Claire's import declaration in Great Britain. The haulier will not need to have the reference for the import declaration before setting off from the exporter's premises, but it will be required before the arriving at port of departure. And since the 1st of October 2021, Jose will now need to travel with his passport as Great Britain will no longer accept EU, EEA and Swiss national identity cards unless you have, se have settled or pre-settled status under the EU settlement scheme. 
Before they get bored, Claire needs to submit the GB import documentation. Claire has bought a software application, an API, which interfaces with Chief so that she can submit the import declination. She will need to include the following information, the customs procedure code, the commodity code, the declaration unique consignment reference, which is the main reference number that links the declaration and the chief system or the customs declaration service. She also will need to provide information such as the departure point and destination, the type, amount and packaging of the goods, the transport methods and costs, currencies and valuation methods, and also their certificates and licenses. When Claire submits her import declaration, this produces a movement reference number, which she will then give to Hosey. Hosey's firm will need to input the movement reference number and the safety and security entry summary declaration into the goods movement reference in preparation for the movement within GVMS. The GMR, the goods movement reference, will then need to be presented as part of the check-in at the border. There is further detail on GVMS in later slides. As this movement is to a GB port or terminal using the pre-lodgement model, Claire must pre-lodge her import declaration to move the goods into GB before Ho Jose moves the goods to GB. All goods entering Great Britain will need to meet safety and security requirements from the 1st of July 2022 onwards. Carriers have the legal responsibility to ensure that the GB Customs Authority is provided with the safety and security pre-arrival information. This includes the entry summary declaration for consignments being imported into GB. The carrier is defined as the operator of the active means of transport. So for accompanied freight, the haulier will be responsible for submitting the entry summary declaration and for unaccompanied freight, the ferry operator will be responsible. In our case, because the goods are accompanied, it is the haulage company's responsibility to ensure that safety and security declarations are submitted. So Jose's firm will submit the entry summary declaration in the new IT system SNSGB. As mentioned, this will be required from the 1st of July 2022 onwards. The entry summary declaration must be submitted at the earliest of either the minimum timing requirements, so at least one hour before arrival in Great Britain for journeys using the Euro Tunnel, or two hours before arrival in Great Britain for short sea journeys, or before the check-in closes. Hosey's firm can submit the declaration themselves or find a third party to do this for them. Further information on using SNSGB can be found on gov.uk or by clicking the link available in the slides. Also to note, the entry summary declaration is required at consignment level for all goods imported into GB. So now that the goods have left Portugal and are moving through France to the port or terminal. Since the 1st of January 2022, Jose's firm will use the Goods Vehicle Movement Service, known as GVMS, to input the import documentation. We outlined how to sign up for GVMS earlier in the slides. This will include uploading the GV import declaration and the entry summary declaration. As the goods move through the EU, Hosey's firm will use the GVMS online system to create a, a goods movement reference known as a GMR. They will enter the movement reference number for the GV, the GB import declaration and include the entry summary declaration, which will update the GMR with the intended vehicle and crossing detail. This is all done in real time so that if anything changes on the journey, the systems are kept up to date. The GMR links all of the declaration references and proves that all the necessary declarations have been pre-lodged. Jose drives from Portugal to the port or terminal in France. He scans the export documentation at the French border. If Jose is carrying several consignments, so products from other customers as well as Carlos or Claire, he may choose to use the envelope function on the French customs website to combine the movement reference numbers 
from all the export accompanying documents for all the consignments that he is carrying. These movement reference numbers can be linked together into a logistics envelope and paired with the number plate of the truck which is scanned before Jose boards the ferry or the shuttle. Using the envelope function is not compulsory, but it allows Jose to scan one barcode at the border rather than several movement reference numbers. Further information on this can be found in the link in the slides. Jose provides the GMR to the carrier, the ferry or tunnel operator on arrival in order to check that it is valid and correct. The haulier can't board if the GMR is not valid. Depending on the carrier's terms and conditions, the driver or haulier might be asked to present the GMR in the following ways. By entering the GMR during the carrier's booking process, by presenting a GMR barcode for scanning at check-in, or by presenting a GMR at check-in, i.e. telling the carrier the GMR number. The GMR includes Hosey's vehicle details. If goods require inspection, GVMS will return a held status. This message can be communicated to Hosey through various means, such as displaying the information on board the ferry or train, or the driver can check the status by inputting their GMR into a web page or by typing the vehicle's license plate onto an app. Please note that when the truck embarks on the shuttle or ferry and reaches the point of no return, the export declaration will be discharged. This will communicate with the French system SI Brexit to confirm that the shuttle or ferry has departed. When the ferry or shuttle leaves, the Office of Exit in France will notify the Office of Export in Portugal that the goods have left the EU via the EU's export control system. Jose and the lorry now make the crossing from France to Great Britain via the English Channel. Jose has now entered Great Britain. He may be stopped if customs checks are required. As outlined earlier, if the consignment is subject to documentary or physical inspection, then Hosey will be notified via GVMS. Hosey can now drive to Claire's premises and deposit the goods. As we explained earlier, Claire must alert the authorities that her seatbelts are coming into GB by pre-lodging her import declaration via Chief. Claire does not need to pay any customs charges for, her, for the delivery of her seatbelts. Hosey has now delivered the goods successfully to Claire at her premises in GB. Hosey does not need to take any further action. As Claire has received the seatbelts, she can now make any updates to Chief that are necessary. For example, if the time of import changes compared to the pre-notification that she had previously submitted. The declaration must be updated to arrived by the end of the working day following the date on which the goods arrived in GB. Since the 1st of January 2022, Claire may find simplified declarations useful for making import declarations. Simplified declarations are designed to defer and delay the submissions of the import declaration and the payment on any goods brought into GB from the EU. To use them, Claire's GB EORI would need to be approved for the Simplified Customs Declaration Processes, known as SCDP or she could appoint an agent that is authorised to use simplified declaration procedures before the goods arrive in GB. Claire would make a simplified frontier declaration or an entry into declarant's records at the time the goods are imported. Claire would then need to follow this up by submitting a supplementary declaration before the fourth working day of the month after the date of import. In order to be approved for SCDP, Claire must have a good compliance record as well as a duty deferment account. Further information on this is available on gov.uk. The tariff rates show you the rate of import duty you, would pay, you should pay for goods. Prior to import, Claire checked and confirmed that this is a zero tariff journey. Tariff codes can be found in the link on the slides. In addition to tariffs, all goods imported to G Great Britain incur VAT. The standard rate of VAT and GB is 20%. However, VAT rates differ on different goods and services. 
To, to check the VAT rate for the products you are importing, you can refer to the link in the slides for further information. Claire is VAT registered and so she can use postponed VAT accounting to account for import VAT. Import VAT on imported goods is normally charged at the same rate as, as if the goods had been supplied in GB. Seatbelts attract VAT at a 20% rate, which will have to be accounted for on this import. For any imports where VAT needs to be paid, this will be paid on Claire's VAT return that covers the date of the import. For more information, click the link which is available in the slides. Alternatively, Claire, having registered for a duty deferment account, may choose to use postponed VAT accounting to account for the import VAT. This means that she imports the goods that if she imports the goods regularly, she can make one payment a month through a direct debit instead of paying for individual consignments. Claire has now received her goods and completed all the relevant action. This means that the seatbelts are now in free circulation in Great Britain. These next few slides show a checklist of the actions each person will need to complete for the movement of the goods. First, let's look at Carlos, the Portuguese exporter. He will have to ensure that he has an EU EORI number. He will need to agree the terms and conditions with the British importer and he will need to submit the export declaration to Portuguese customs. Jose the driver will need to ensure that he has a copy of the GB importer's GB EORI number. He will need the movement reference number as part of the export, export accompanying document. His firm will also need to submit an entry summary declaration into the SNSJB system from the 1st of July 2022 and provide the MRN for the entry summary declaration to Jose. And since the 1st of October 2021, Jose will need to ensure that he, he travels with his passport in order to enter GB. Claire, the British importer, will need to ensure that she has agreed the type of income terms that they will trade on and she will need to agree these with the EU exporter. She will need to make sure that she has a GB EORI number. She will need to register for a duty deferment account. She will need to check that the goods meet the rules of origin and obtain or provide appropriate evidence to support the import declaration. She will need to check VAT and tariff rates for the goods. And as of the 1st of January 2022, Claire will now need to submit a pre-lodged customs declaration on Chief. So this next slide shows a summary of the steps taken by the three people in our journey that we've outlined today. First, Carlos, the Portuguese exporter, will complete the merged exit summary declaration and the export declaration through the Portuguese export system, STADA. Please note that Carlos could use a Portuguese customs agent to help him complete the paperwork so that he would not have to do this himself. Jose, the driver, will have the movement reference number for the export and the import declarations and he will drive the seatbelts through Portugal to France. From the 1st of July 2022, they will need to ensure that they also complete the entry summary declaration for the goods entering Great Britain. Jose drives the goods onto the ferry or tunnel and takes the goods and clears them at the GB border. Finally, Claire, the British importer, will receive the seatbelts at her company's premises in Great Britain. Claire uses Chief to pre-notify her import and submits the import declaration. Claire also inputs the arrival of the goods on Chief no later than the end of the working day following the goods arriving in Great Britain. Please note again that Claire could use a British customs agent to help her complete the import paperwork. So this slide contains some useful links for you to get more information about what you need to do to get ready for the new border control changes. As you mentioned at the start of this presentation, we will be publishing the slides on gov.uk for you to read through and check the links out at your own convenience. So thank you for listening to today's presentation. We hope that you found it useful. We will be taking away any questions from the chat and we will publish the answer to the most frequently asked questions in a document and via email. The slides will also be available online too and alongside a recording of the webinar which will be hosted on our webinars webpage on gov.uk. This means that you can download and click on the links in your own time. Thank you again for listening today.